Yeah, thank you very much for inviting us. I'm the speaker, but I'm representing our whole team uh, at the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Sciences, and I want to talk about our uh, efforts to get new historical newspaper corpora for the Deutsches Text Archive project, which we work at. I will tell you what that is in a minute, and um, about our ways how we manage curation, harmonization of resources, and how we provide them to the community. So um, I give you a short introduction about our project. As I said, it's uh, called Deutsches Textarchiv, an English-German text archive. And our goal is to create a corpus of historical German texts dating back to the 17th to 19th century to enable the um, well studies about the development of the new high German language. And um, currently, we have gathered about 3,000 works. Um, which were all manually transcribed. The DTA core corpus um, is actually about 2,000 works, and then um, there are a lot of works we gathered through curation. Um, they were manually transcribed and also annotated using the TRI annotation tag set uh, and a special format we developed for that. And transcription was um, well performed in the double keying with the double keying method. So um, we try to get really high text quality and I hope we achieved that too. Uh, then there are automatic linguistic uh, annotation steps like tokenization, lemmatization, part of speech tagging and orthographic normalization, which means we are normalizing the uh, historical spelling variants so that you can research the corpus with the modern spelling and get all the historical forms. And um, yeah, you can access the text through our platform. Um, you can perform quite elaborate corpus queries there using our query language, but it's also possible to download other resources to do your own research. It's all CC licenses. And as Martin already said, we are a partner in Claren. Uh, the uh, Academy of Sciences in Berlin is a center B um, for Claren, and so we are providing all our resources through the Claren infrastructure as well. Uh, yeah, as I shortly mentioned, we have a TI format which we produced based on our historical texts, uh, which should enable unambiguous annotation of texts. So we um, took a subset of the TI tag set to ensure that our texts are interoperable and every text which goes into our corpora will be annotated according to our guidelines so that all the texts will be harmonized with one another. Uh, then there is a quality assurance platform as we call it, DTAQ, where all the texts land at first, then um, there are some quality assurance steps before they are actually um, released on our platform, but you can also access all the texts in DTAQ. We like to have it as a collaborative platform where the community can contribute, can also correct texts, report errors, and add comments to the texts. They are already downloadable via DTAQ as well. The background project a bit for our German text archive is the so-called DWDS, the Digital Dictionary of the German Language. This is actually the um, long-term project of the Academy of Sciences, and we are associated to this project as a project funded by the German Research Foundation. And uh, the DWDS uh, is creating a corpus-based dictionary for the synchronic high German language, recent German language, and the German text archive is providing a historical fundament for this project. So there are newspaper corpora within the DWS, uh, DWDS corpora as well, um, but these are uh, modern newspapers, as you can see, the weekly newspaper Die Zeit or Berlin newspapers, the Tagesspiegel and Berlin 
Berliner Zeitung, Berlin Newspaper. Okay, so the problem I want to talk about right now is um, the following. The DTA core corpus was created based on a fixed bibliography and this bibliography contained very different text types um, from scientific texts, functional texts to fiction, but uh, it didn't contain any periodicals. So um, we didn't have journals or newspapers in our original bibliography. And we are trying to gather a corpus of this very important text type, obviously for the development of the language, by curating resources. And the curation part is uh, actually a very important part of the Claren activities. So uh, within Claren, we actually have the opportunity to uh, be in contact with partners and to gather newspaper corpora through external projects, actually, who collaborate with us. Um, this is a graphic about, uh, m well, maybe the workflow we are performing here. So um, texts get into the, oh, sorry, DTA uh, in very different formats, and we convert them into our DTA base format, which is TI XML. Then they land into our quality assurance platform. They go through quality assurance steps, metadata, source images, everything is added, and then um, we publish them on our platform and also within Clarin D, as I said. So everybody wins. Uh, the DTA gathers new newspapers for the corpus. The projects who collab co collaborate with us uh, have a platform where they can publish their texts, where they have quality assurance, uh, can work further on their texts, connect their resources with other corpora and have a repository. And the community will have the possibility to access harmonized texts and collections in one format via the DTA, uh, have access to scattered resources which are now interoperable, uh, compare corpora and so on. Um, so now I'd like to present you um, which corpora of newspapers we currently have. And as you will see, they are all lot, a lot small, uh, smaller than the Europeana newspaper corpora. Uh, this is, of course, due to our uh, approach that everything has to be transcribed manually and there's a lot of uh, manual effort in that. So. One um, collection is the Mannheim Corpus of Historical Newspapers. Here we collaborate with the Institute of the German Language in Mannheim. The um, Mannheim Corpus of Historical Newspapers has two parts. One is already digitized and is currently provided via the DTA. The other one uh, has to be digitized, which is done uh, according to the DTA workflow already, uh, which is really nice. Then there's the so-called Ham Hamburgischer Korrespondent, a uh, newspaper from Hamburg, which uh, has been digitized in the course of a project at the University of Paderborn. The new, no, new Renanen uh, newspaper, Neue Rheinische Zeitung, uh, digitized at the Academy of Sciences in Berlin in the course of the critical edition of the complete, complete works of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. So it's a newspaper provided by them. And then there are other newspaper collections which are actually smaller than that from other sources. So here's a small overview uh, about what is actually provided right now and what are the processing steps we actually have to do in our project to uh, publish the newspapers. As you can see, some of the Newspapers came in the two-step format, had to be uh, converted to the DTA base format. Then we actually apply article text types if possible. So we um, make the difference between political news, financial news, uh, feuilleton, stuff like that. It's not done for all of the newspapers, but uh, for a significant amount of them, and especially for those which are now digitized from scratch according to the DTA workflow. 
So um, these kinds of projects really help for the whole workflow um, if we actually have a say in the matter from the beginning on, of course. Um, yeah, and as you can see, it's newspapers from very different times. Here, um, there's the actually the timeline for that. And as you can see, it's an opportunistic collection. It's not balanced at all. So um, we are taking newspapers which are of good quality from external projects, no matter du during which time or in what place they have appeared. Then when we have gathered a newspaper corpus, then we can say, well, let's create a subcorpus which is balanced. But right now, we just have to try to build up a corpus for that. And also, we want to contribute to the community that they can actually publish their resources via the DTA platform. So as you can see, the 1840s are really uh, well represented. This is especially due to the Neue Rheinische Zeitung, which has only, was only appearing uh, during two years, actually, uh, during the German Revolution. So um, you've got a lot of newspapers there, too. And then you can see down here, um, these are all newspaper issues, but th some of them are only from one newspaper. Others are from diverse <coughs> newspapers. This is uh, actually a an important point here too. Yeah, access. We try to provide access for the newspapers over time through our platform, as I said. So some of the newspapers are already online. The um, Hamburg newspaper is completely online via the DTA platform. Some of them are still in DTA queue for uh, quality steps to be performed, and others are in preparation and will be released via our platform, most of them by the end of this year. Of course, the Mannheim Corpus of Historical Newspapers too is currently digitized and might take a little bit longer. And then we've got um, a couple of journals too, which have been added to the DTA. One is the uh, Polytechnical Journal of Dingla, a technical journal which appeared during the 19th century at most, and which has been digitized by a project at the Humboldt University in Berlin. And it's accessible within the DTA for corpus queries because it's uh, a very large por portal or um, collection right now. And another one, and this is the only collection we've got which uh, was originally transcribed uh, using OCR. Um, and that's the Grenzboten Journal, a cultural and political journal from the 19th century as well. Um, here the partner was the uh, University Library of Bremen. And uh, as I said, there were OCR um, steps for text recognition and then uh, now there are a lot of post-processing steps we have to um, apply our layout and structural annotation somehow. We didn't get that from the OCR. We have to do correction steps of the OCR and it's actually a lot of work. So maybe an interesting resource to discuss what OCR does and what it can't provide as opposed to manual transcription and tagging. So um, as for the format, I already mentioned we've got our TI format. We enhanced this format a bit for newspapers, provided documentation about how to annotate newspapers. If you're interested, uh, you could look into that. And um, well, yeah, some additional tagging solutions we applied were, for example, as I already said, um, values for divisions for article types like political news, feuilleton, and so on. Also, introductory parts are a bit uh, individual for newspapers rather than for other books. So um, we did some adjustments to the format there. Um, and now we are trying to annotate other newspapers in a similar way according to that format. Some prospects about access and analysis of the 
newspaper corp rather than the DTA, of course. Like all our texts, you can access them one by one. They all have uh, like their own website with uh, metadata and then you can get into the text and you can read the text or the, see the um, XML. TI, you can also download the text in different formats and so on. Um, some of them are still in the quality assurance platform. You can also access them then. It's just uh, that you have to sign up for DTAQ and then you can access all the texts and you can download them there too. And as I said, correct them, stuff like that. Then you can also research the texts um, via our platform. We've got our query language, which is called DDC. And uh, this is an example for a query I did on just political news articles, which are coming from one newspaper, the Hamburg Corres Correspondent. And I was um, searching for the term session. Here you can also see what the linguistic analysis did. So the lemmatization and POS tagging enabled us to find uh, different variants of the, the morphological variants of the term by just searching for one term. And uh, also complex corpus queries are already possible via DTAQ. So texts which are still in there can still be queried using DDC. And in this case, I was searching for session uh, in all texts which were classified as a newspaper. And so here you can see I found very different newspapers and I can scan through the results here. Then uh, we've got a tool called Diacolo, which has been implemented by my colleague Brian Jurisch. Uh, what it does is, um, well, uh, getting the collocations of uh, one word. So now I have searched for the term bike, Fahrrad in German, and then I get collocations uh, through time. So you can see maybe how the discourse of one term has changed over time. So I was performing the search on the D Dingler Polytechnisches Journal, the Polytechnical Journal, and uh, you can actually uh, see a little bit maybe the technical development. In 1890, the connotations of bike were something like pedal or biker or uh, running by foot. And uh, then in 1910, it's all about motor, uh, automobile, motor, craft, and aircraft, and things like that. And also, as I already said, we are providing all these resources for Claren as well. So here's one example from the Virtual Language Observatory where I filtered the records by Deutsche Sexarchiv, which is our collection, and Zeitung, which is newspaper, and I get our metadata records as well. We are also um, well connected to the Federated Content Search and other Claren services as well. So to conclude, um, as I showed you, uh, what we are working at is the cur curation of newspapers from different sources, from different project partners, and as I said, it's an opportunistic collection right now. Um, it's still work in progress, you all also saw that. There are other resources we'd like to curate, for example, the Texan Berg Corpus, which is a, corp a journal uh, of alpinistic texts from the 19th century again. And um, yeah, interesting from my perspective also to um, uh, what was said also yesterday in the discussion would be um, what is necessary for researchers? Do they need like this manual transcription and tagging or is OCR enough and which quality should texts have um, and the prospects on that? Also an interesting point in this um, well, in these areas, optical layout recognition, I'd say, especially for newspapers where you have these articles, art complex article structures on one page, 
which have to be represented in the TI format somehow and uh, the problems with that. Yeah, so thanks very much and if you have questions. <laughs> Thanks for this uh, very impressive um, overview of uh, rich functionality. Um, you've, you've paid a lot of attention to um, uh, quality management, and I was wondering whether you had involved um, users in the assessment of the functionality and whether you can already point to studies that have been made possible uh, by this portal. Um. Um, yeah, we, we do have other curation projects, not only for newspapers as well, and uh, project teams um, who are actually using the DTIQ platform for their further work on their texts. There are also editors in this platform which they can use and uh, I think um, it works quite well. They also give us feedback and we try to implement the functionality they need. Um, so yeah, uh, and also that we once did one study, I don't, I don't know if that's maybe what you mean about actually the quality of our texts. So we had people proofreading our texts in DTAQ and then we took the results and saw uh, how good is quali the quality of the double keying method. So this was one small study we once did for that. But uh, I think as for the actual quality, uh, and then we had one uh, curation project actually where uh, OCR texts were corrected and then we uh, or our partners uh, tried out c different Claren web services with the old text and with the new text and they um, took a look at the results and compared them to one another. Um, but that's about it. There are not more studies than that. We try to encourage people to do some more of these works. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I like Deutsches Text Archive very much. I sometimes show this project to my students who maybe will be future information workers or librarians or something like that as a new uh, perspective. Um, and I have one remark. Uh, two uh, presentations, the first one was a library, the second one is a corpus. I don't see much difference. Of course, it is not the same. But uh, I think that uh, this is another proof that there is some confusion regarding uh, the idea of text corpus. Uh, this is for me uh, a very <coughs> modern enhanced digital library where you can read and you can apply uh, all uh, beautiful tools of digital humanities. So instead of reading paper by paper, you ask one question. Please tell me, was this parameter growing within 50 years? Yeah. Well, we actually try to... What, what we have been doing with libraries, but very strenuously reading one, one paper, one papers one by one. Here, this is like using uh, a library rather than uh, using uh, a, a corpus. Mm. Well, from the beginning, we try to address different user communities, actually. Also, uh, representatives of literary studies or um, uh, scientists in the field of edition creation who could take the texts and further annotate them with their comments and uh, things like that. And I think we achieved that. There are really different types of research questions to our corpus, but it's also, of course, a corpus for linguists. And we do have these linguistic features. We do have the possibilities to query the corpus from a linguistic point of view, but there's also additional functionality. So we are really trying to get a broad community since, yeah, 
texts are interesting for lots of people. Um, I think in reaction to, to your question and your comments, uh, what I have understood from, from scholars up till now is um, um, that if a, um, a data set, let call, let's call a data set to stay neutral, if um, it uh, is the result of uh, a careful um, selection uh, with a research question as background, then it becomes the kind of object that uh, historians or uh, people from literary studies uh, and what have you um, uh, can, can use. Uh, and then the quality is, of course, an enormous extra uh, uh, advantage. But as, as, um, as you said, we have uh, here an opportunistic um, collection. That means that um, the selection is, in a way, arbitrary. And for some research purposes, that is not enough as a basis for research. So maybe for linguistic purposes, uh, it doesn't really matter whether you, whether you uh, have everything from a certain period or from a certain title. But for some research uh, domains, it is important. So I think you should keep, have, yeah, we have to keep that in mind. Yeah. Well, um, there is always the DTA core corpus where we tried to create a balanced selection of texts, right? So this um, should should be the core corpus as I, as uh, we named it, and uh, there you can you should be able to really see the progression uh, progression over time for different text types, and then all the stuff we curate, these are actually sub corpora in some in some cases. They are really specific, like we've got a huge subcorpus of funeral sermons, actually, because there was one project about that cooperating with us. And so now people interested in that can query this corpus. And I think it's similar with newspapers. If you are now interested in one certain newspaper, like, for example, the Neue Rheinische Zeitung, which was only appearing in two years, so we've got all the numbers of that, uh, then you can do it. Other things you can't do with our newspaper corpus because it's uh, not balanced, yeah. So it's for the user to decide what they can use and, yeah, to look at it critically. Hmm. Yeah, well, I just want to like, add to your answer. In the end, you give the user all the capability of building their own balanced cor corpus because I don't think the infrastructure should decide what the research question and the, the corpus should look like, you know, the, it should be something that the user can yeah. define because we have so so many scenarios for, for questions. Um, what I want, I was really interested by the, the types that you mentioned. How, is that also done manually and how do you, where and how do you mark it? Uh, it's marked in the TEI text actually and it's done manually and uh, mm -hmm. the the set of types we created together with our partners in Paderborn who knew actually a lot about historical newspapers so it's uh, done together with specialists in the field and now uh, yeah it's actually manual structuring we apply. Okay good thanks again um, and move on. Um, we will actually be, I think there'll be an opportunity to explore a bit more in the um, session after the break, the um, differences between digital libraries and corpora and different types of data set and different ways of querying them. That will be, I think, one of the topics of the, uh, uh, the next session.